Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we have a 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Lithininge. So we're gonna go ahead and open it up and see what we got. Okay, when you first open it up, you'll have some styrofoam. Uh, it looks like a, uh, a small service card. We have a pretty lengthy uh, product manual. And then we have the battery. All right, first impressions about this battery. It does look like it's uh, very basic. I mean, you know, just your black, uh, your black battery with the labeling on the front. The one thing I do like though is their manual. Uh, I just read through it and it is very comprehensive. It goes through every aspect of owning this battery and how you should use it. Uh, it shows you how to do series and parallel connections. It tells you what your settings for your solar charge controller should be. It tells you what to do if the BMS has uh, shut down and needs to be woken back up. Uh, it is very good and it also goes through all the specifications of this battery and some other variations of this battery depending on the amp hour size. Also looking at this battery, uh, when you first receive it, it does come with the post bolts right on the terminals along with the post bolt covers. Um, these terminals look like, I don't believe this is epoxy, I think it's more like a silicone or like a rubber, which is fine because it's still IP65 rated. Uh, when it comes to the internals, the maximum charge rate of this battery is 100 amps. Uh, it looks like it can do a it can do a continuous discharge of 100 amps with a peak discharge of 300 amps. So we'll be testing that in a little bit. It does say that the dimensions are 13 inches across, 6.78 inches deep, and 8.47 inches in height. So this is your typical Group 31 battery case. And the weight of this battery is 28.7 pounds. And the, uh, the housing material is like an ABS plastic. When it comes to series and parallel connections, you can actually take four of these and connect them in parallel to make a 12 volt, 400 amp hour bank. And then you can, you can actually take those four sets and connect them in series for 16 batteries all together for a 48 volt, 400 amp hour bank. But if you're looking for like a smart battery, uh, this is not the one you want. This battery is basically pure capacity. Okay, when you first receive your battery, the first thing that you should do is check it with a multimeter and see what the voltage on the terminals is. That will determine if it was shipped to you properly. It should be shipped to you like right around 50%. And that kind of makes you wonder how they stored the battery. Uh, you know, again, they should be storing it at around 50 or 60%. So let's go ahead and check the voltage now. All right, and the voltage is 13.18, so that is exactly where it should be. It should be between 13.1 volts and 13.2 volts when you receive it. All right, the next thing that you should do is go ahead and charge your battery all the way up to 100%. And then what I like to do is do a discharge test to make sure that I'm getting the 100 amp hours that I paid for. So I'm gonna go ahead and charge it up to 100%, do a discharge test, and I'll let you know the results as soon as I'm done. All right, so the capacity test is done for this Lithinage 100 amp hour battery, and it actually gave us 107.12 amp hours for this test. So that is really good. All right, so I've got this battery charged back up, and we're gonna go do some high amperage testing. All right, now it's time for the high amperage testing for this Lithinage 12 volt 100 amp hour battery. So let me show you what I have going on behind me. Okay, here is the battery and what it has is it has an amp clamp connected to it so we can watch the amperage. It also has a voltmeter so we can watch the voltage of the battery. Um, it's connected to a 5000 watt MX Moon Free Pure Sine Wave Inverter. And what that inverter is powering is a 200 watt heater, a 500 watt heater, an 1100 watt griddler, and a variable wattage new wave induction cooktop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run 100 amps through this for five minutes using this timer, just to make sure that the battery doesn't have any problems doing that. And then the documentation says that it can actually do a peak of 300 amps. So we're gonna go a little over 300 to see if the battery actually shuts down due to a high amperage event. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna turn this heater on. And we're gonna turn on the new wave 
to 600 watts, medium high, start. And that will give us right around 100 amps. As you can see, we have right around 102. And I'll come back in five minutes to make sure that everything's okay. All right, well, it's been five minutes and 17 seconds, and this battery has been pulling 100 amps with absolutely no problem. You can see that it's been a constant 105 amps, and the battery voltage is still 12.65, which is totally fine. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try to get it up past 300 amps, and we'll see if the battery shuts off. So let's go ahead and crank everything up. Let's go ahead and turn this heater on. Let's turn on our new wave to 1300 watts max sear. And let's turn on the griddler to high. So now our amperage is 338 amps. And it's starting to go down a little bit, but it's well over 300. The battery voltage is 11.65, so it's dropped about a volt. It's been doing this for about 30 seconds now. I'm gonna wait until this reaches about eight minutes. If it reaches eight minutes, then this does not have high amperage protection. We're still at 325 amps. Yeah, we're holding steady at 324 amps right now. Battery voltage is down to 11.52. Seven minutes and 12 seconds. The inverter is showing that we're pulling almost 3,100 watts right now. That is way too much for one 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. Okay, it's been seven minutes and 55 seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off. Uh, 322 amps, voltage of the battery is 11.46 now. So I'm done. All right, now that the high amperage testing is done, uh, I've been looking over the manual to try to see if it says anything about cold temperature charging protection which nowadays I feel that every battery should have. It should, be, uh, it should be a standard feature. So it doesn't say anything about it and it doesn't say anything like that on the battery. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna throw it in my deep freezer for 24 hours and then pull it out and try to charge it. And if it charges, then it does not have cold temperature charging protection. All right, well, this listening battery has been in my deep freezer for the last 26 hours. So it is frozen solid. Now, I couldn't find anywhere in the documentation that said this has low temperature charging protection. So I'm really going blind on this one. So I am gonna use my Litime 20 amp charger. As you can see, the light is blinking green right now, which means it's on standby. Uh, if it's a solid green, that means that the battery is fully charged. If it's a solid red, then it's charging. And if it's blinking red, that, that means that there's a fault with the unit. So once I start charging this battery, what will happen is it will go from this blinking green to a solid red, but only for a second or two. And then the battery will tell it that it's full and it will go to a solid green. So let's go ahead and try it out now. All right, here we go. There it goes, it'll start charging. And it's not turning off. So that means that this battery does not have low temperature charging protection. All right, so what do I think of the 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Lithening? Well, I have to say, you know, it didn't really pass all my tests at all. Um, you know, when it comes to capacity, it, I think it did 107 amp hours, which is, which is good. That's what exactly it should be. It can easily power uh, 100 amps with no problem for five minutes. So we've got that there. But then when it comes to the safety features, it doesn't really have anything. Um, I powered over 320 amps for a minute and a half. And uh, this thing didn't shut off, even though it does say that it should shut off because it has a peak amperage of 300 amps. And then it didn't say it had cold temperature charging protection, so I can't really ding that, but I feel like that option should be a default for any battery that you have. I believe that this battery, if you're looking at just capacity, 
it'll do just fine. But I would honestly spend the, you know, 10 or $20 more to get those added protections just so you know that battery is safe and it won't uh, destroy itself if it gets too cold. So if you have any questions about the lithium battery, please leave them in the comments. I'll leave a link to this in my description just in case you want to look further into it. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Bye-bye.